Claire here from What Laura Likes. So today is a fun video. It's about Catholic kids and we're going to talk about books you can use to further your children's Catholic education. So if that is something that would interest you, then stay tuned. Hey guys, welcome to my channel. My name is Laura. If you are new, welcome and make sure you hit that subscribe button. That's somewhere I think over here. So today I just wanted to share some new books that we've gotten for our family for the coming homeschool year, but also just amazing Catholic books that will help further your children's education. And you know what? It also helps further your education because I find that I learn things every single time I open a children's saint book or a catechism or something along those lines. I just want to start out by saying that it is every single Catholic parent's duty to teach their children about the faith. Don't leave this up to religious education. Don't leave this up to Father on his Sunday homilies. Don't leave this up to Catholic schools even. You are the primary educator of your children, both in general and also definitely when it comes to the faith. God has gifted you these souls that are going to last for eternity. And it is so, so important that we raise our children to know the truth about our faith so that they stay lifelong Catholics. Every Catholic parent wants their child to stay a lifelong Catholic. It would break my heart if my children ever separate themselves from the church. Oh my gosh, it would break my heart. But, you know, not for myself, but like for my children's souls, right? So if you are blessed with children, that is the most amazing gift from God. And, you know, he's entrusting these souls to you, right? He loves these souls way more than you do. And he's entrusting you to guide them towards truth and towards the whys of our faith so that they stay Catholic. So I know I have other videos on like how to raise a lifelong Catholic. I also have a video about vocation. So I will put those down below as well as up here. But um, let's get into some books. Now, just as a preface, all of these books are in a in my Amazon storefront under Catholic Kids Books. So if you, any of them are interesting to you and you want to know more about them, you can click on that link. It's in my bio. And what's down below? On, on Instagram, it's in my bio, which I'm used to talking on Instagram. Okay, so in no particular order, let's just go through some of the new books that I have. So this one is St. George and the Dragon. Now this book is retold by Margaret Hodges. This is a very classic, well-illustrated book. Now St. George is, of course, someone who, he's a patron saint of England. So there's some different books that talk about his story, but in general, he's fighting a dragon, um, and he's a knight, and there's a princess involved, and this one is just beautiful. It is absolutely, it's, there's quite a lot of um, language, I mean, there's quite a lot of words, but also, see every single page has like a full text here, and then an image here, which is just beautiful, but also there is a lot of symbolism in this book. So, oh, sorry. So, if you are into St. George or your kids like knights in shining, um, in shining armor and damsels in distress, <laughs> this is a good book. All right. The next one I have is kind of out of season, but it is about St. Valentine, and it's beautiful. Again, this is a mosaic um, art illustration, so you can see that every page is done with mosaic tiles, and then there's some text on the other side. It's absolutely gorgeous and it's such a sad story um saint valentine this is the one where he befriended a soldier and his daughter they came to him for to help with her blindness and um at the end she is able to see like he is put to death but she's able to see it's just a beautiful story the saints are so important and this is something that i wasn't raised i wasn't raised with the saints when i was com i was confirmed in 11th grade which was really late and I didn't even know, I literally opened up a saint book and I started at the beginning and I found St. Anne and I was like, well, I want to be a mom. She's Mary's mom, so I'm going to pick her and then I close the saint book. So sad. So raise your kids on the saints because man, are they uplifting. You know, the more saints that I know about, the more it's like, we're not alone. We have this whole cloud of witnesses and they want us to talk to them. They want us to be their friends. So another one about a saint that I got is Bridget and the Butter. So St. Bridget is from Ireland. Um, I think she knew St. Patrick. I think this talks about her. And so the idea is about giving everything for somebody else and then receiving more in return. So, see she got more. 
because she gave her butter to a woman, which I'm pretty sure was Jesus or um, someone along those lines. So moving away from saints for a minute, the, my daughter got this for her first Holy communion, and this is an amazing book. It's called Heavenly Hosts, Eucharistic Miracles for Kids. So I absolutely love Eucharistic Miracles. They, I don't know how anyone hears about a Eucharistic Miracle and doesn't immediately become Catholic. Again, it's just like mind-blowing that this doesn't happen. But this book is really, really great. It has so many different stories of Eucharistic Miracles. There are only a few pages you can read one at a time. And there's lots of space in between the words. And these are just fantastic. I have we read all of them, I think, or we're almost all the way through. And, oh, it's just so cool. The Eucharist is just amazing, and it's just, like, the whole point of our faith, and Jesus is always with us, and it's just so cool. So, this is an awesome book for anybody to have to read about Eucharistic miracles. This, The Weight of the Mass, The Weight of the Mass is a classic story. It's beautiful. I didn't know it growing up, but pretty much this woman asks for a piece of bread, and she says, I'll offer a mass for you for a slice of your old bread. And obviously the bread ends up, he puts the words a mass on a piece of paper and then puts the bread on the other side and ultimately nothing weighs more than the mass. And then she, at the end the woman feels terrible because she should have understood herself, being, even though she was a devout Catholic, that the mass weighed so much more than what she'd asked for. Um, very, very beautiful tale. The king and queen are getting married and people aren't coming to their wedding. Anyway, the illustrations were just fabulous. So this is by Josephine Nabiso. Alright, and then we have Women of Faith. So this is a great one for girls and th some of these are pretty intense, right? Like I'm pretty sure this woman was um, had her eyes popped out and then um, yeah, so I think these are all early martyrs if I remember correctly. Yeah, St. Bridget's in here. This is again, it's a beautifully illustrated book. St. Lucy's in here. So this is be a fabulous book for um, a girl in your life. Chloe got this for her first Holy Communion as well. And St. Agnes is in here. And they have a prayer at the bottom. So the thing about the saints, you know, especially about martyrs, is it's not always a beautiful tale. A lot of it can be kind of graphic. And you know as graphic as Maccabees. I'm just, I just finished reading Maccabees. And it's a lot of fighting. I'm finally in the wisdom books. I'm reading through the Bible. Okay. So a couple more new ones. So the next one I mentioned in, I was talking about our consecration to Our Lady and consecrating yourself to Mary for kids. And they talk about this book, which is called Take It to the Queen, A Tale of Hope. And all, this is very, very symbolic of Mary and God and um, Jesus. And so there's a king and the, the people end up kind of saying, well, we don't need the king and things go awry. They even beat up the prince, um, but you know, then they end up not doing very well. Can you see how beautiful that is? And so, like I said in the other book, they bring an apple to our um, to the king, and our lady cuts it up pleasingly and puts it on a platter. And it's just a beautiful book that symbolizes um, Mary. And this is also by Josephine Nabiso. So hold on, Neil. So these two books are very similarly. I think they're also. They're illustrated by the same people and they're written by the same people so they're really a beautiful set to get for a birthday or just because. And then the final one that I just picked up is called Roses in the Snow. This was a beautiful book about St. Elizabeth of Hungary. Let me show you the illustrations. Just absolutely beautiful. I didn't know about St. Elizabeth of Hungary until um, I read this book. So again, we are always learning, right? So those are my new ones. So those are all going to be in my Amazon store. And then I'm just going to run through really fast in case you guys haven't seen my other videos to talk about what books I use to teach my kids. So you kind of just get a general idea about um, like what I use and what's available in case you're, you know, kind of new to figuring out, you know, okay, I want to teach my kids the faith, but where do I start? So either maybe you're a new convert or maybe you're like rediscovering your faith or diving deeper so you can be a new parent so one of the books I absolutely love is this graphic novel Our Lady of Fatima there's also one Our Lady of Guadalupe I want to get and so it looks like this on the inside 
This one's beautiful. It has the prayer. It has the angel coming first. And what it is, is it's the child Jesus talking to St. Lucia when she's older in the convent, but she doesn't know that it's him until the end. It's so great. So this is a very good. This is like a catechesis of the apparition. Like It does teach you the prayers. It talks about the different apparitions. It's very, very good. So highly recommend this book. And also, there, like I said, the other ones um, are Lady Guadalupe. Then you can't do you can't go wrong with Legos. This is the Catechism of the Seven Sacraments. This is an amazing book full of catechesis, and it's just it's really fun because it's it's all kind of this dialogue graphic novel again, but with Legos. And it's just this this um, boy and girl or man and woman talking about the faith, and then it goes through all the different things. So you could definitely just sit down and kind of read it. And maybe read like, I don't know, 10 pages a day or something like that and work your way through this and your children would learn and you would learn a lot about our faith. Some more saint resources. They have the Life of the Saint books. This is by the Magnificat and, uh, or Magnificat and Ignatius Press. This is Trez, the Little Flower of Lizia. And I'll just show you what the inside looks like. So these are really great. And they have a lot of them. We have Mother Teresa as well. And then there's just so many. Um, I also have like a compendium of saints. So these are great because then, you know, some of them are alphabetical, like this one's alphabetical, but some of them are also by date. But they're just nice because they kind of the picture, like I have an adult compendium of saints that, um, like I think it's saints day by day or something along those lines, saint of the day. But this one has the um, picture and it just has a little bit of a, a little blurb. So depending on how you want to line out your year, if you want to go, you can just read through it, a saint a day, or you could go along and try to track the liturgical calendar. So here's St. Benedict, we just had his feast day recently. So those are awesome. And then this is our favorite picture Bible. I've talked about this one before. We are in the call of Matthew. We've just been kind of reading through it not consistently enough, but we have. And so it just kind of covers all the basics. And I think it ends with Peter receiving his primacy. It's really important. I know a lot of people have the, um, I think it's called the Adventure Bible. I just, I just really, I wish they had a Catholic Bible like that because there's such important nuances that a Protestant Bible is going to leave out. And this that last page about Peter's primacy is so, so important. And we, we have, I mean, it's great to teach our kids the basics of, you know, what happened in the Old Testament and, but gosh, you got to have that tie-in. You guys watch Steve Ray's In the Footsteps of God or Footprints of God on form.org. You have to have the tie-in because the Old Testament, God doesn't do anything by mistake. And the Old Testament completely wraps in the New Testament. And if you don't have something that's doing that for your kids, they're not going to understand salvation history on a full scale. The last th book I wanted to mention for this video are the um, the New St. Joseph Baltimore Catechisms. Now, I bought number two and then found out that this was a, for a bit older an older group. So then I went back and bought book one as well. And so these are question answer. They're kind of, they're question answer, but they're also like fill in the blank, discussion questions, true or false, other readings. They have a like liturgical action. And so I have almost like a textbook, but I really love it. I know some people have issues with um, memorizing perhaps like who made us, God made us, who is God, God is a supreme being who made all things. But personally, I didn't have, I had, I had a lack in catechis, catechesis. I know you guys have talked about this over and over again. But I would not have even been able to answer you, why are we here? Why did God make us? What does it mean to love God? Well, how do we love God? How do we talk? You know, I just, all these basic questions that a child should be able to answer. I do think there is really, there is value in memorizing those inf that information as long as there's the why and there's like the bigger picture about it as well. So I'm actually a huge fan of these books and I use them and I just walk through them with my kids. Yeah. If you guys have questions or need specific book recommendations, let me know. A lot of these book recommendations I will get from book lists from Catholic curriculum. So some of these are from Seton's curriculum um, suggestions, like they're the books they've suggested. Um, let's see, modern, I'm going to butcher this, 
Mater Ambilis. <laughs> I can't remember how it's spelled, so I can't think of how to say it. That's going to have book lists because that's Charlotte Mason based, which is very book heavy. You can look up RC History, which is, uh, I think it's Roman Catholic History, and they have book lists like what books they would use for their history, which is going to help you like, figure out what saints to teach when. CHC might have some book lists. If you guys know about Catholic book lists per age, for like homeschooling or just in general for age groups, let me know. I also get book recommendations from Sarah McKenzie at A Read Aloud Revival. She is Catholic. She Her platform's way more than, it's not Catholic specific, but um, she does talk about saints sometimes. Same with um, Pam Barnhill if you guys are into homeschooling. Both of those ladies are really, really big, in my opinion, in the homeschool arena and they are both Catholic. So they do talk about their faith from time to time if you can, sometimes can catch um, catch that in their talks. So questions down below. I hope this was helpful. Please let me know if you need um, other resources for teaching your children the faith. Just just live it, you guys. You know, pray the rosary with them. Encourage them to pray the rosary. Encourage them to pray with you. Teach them about a saint. Teach them about a new saint today. It doesn't take very long. Use the Sprouts podcast, which I'll link down below, because she just has like a little five-minute blurb every day. And you can use that to teach the faith on the way to school, on the way to the pool, like whatever. Pray the rosary in your car if you need to, if that's the only way you can get your family all together. Pray the Divine Mercy Chapel at 3 o'clock hour. Um, that takes seven minutes if you don't do it along with relevant radio and just, you know, just pray and you keep learning because as you learn and then you talk with your kids about this stuff, like it's just fantastic. And so just don't be afraid to teach them. Like if you're reading the catechism and you come across something cool, like just talk to your kids about it. I just do that all the time. Talk to your kids like they're, they're at your level. Because they will surprise you about how much they can comprehend. Don't ever dumb down the faith for your child. Because your child can get there as long as you have that expectation. Kids are naturally close to God. They're naturally close to Mary. They can totally comprehend the saints. They can totally understand martyrdom. Like, it's just, it's all there. I think just because, you know, their soul has only been touched by God, you know, eight years ago or five years ago. Whereas I'm you know, 36 and it's been a while since God has created me. And so, and I, you know, and then I've turned away from him and sinned and sinned and sinned and had to come back. And so my relationship with him has been different than their, this beautiful, innocent, you know, climb towards their, um, their faith. So, but we all have journeys and no matter how old your kid is, there's never, don't ever lose hope and, um, just pray your rosary. Pray, pray, pray. God bless. Have a very beautiful day, and I will talk to you again real soon. Remember to know God, love God, and do God's will. Until next time, bye.